Hello everybody, today we are taking a look at some video transmitters, in particularly the FX79 series. Now these come in 25mW and 200mW. They have 40 channels covering 5 bands, including the latest race band. Now why is race band so important? Well basically it's a wider spread spectrum of frequencies. Each of the channels are now spaced out at 37MHz, meaning you can get more people up in the air at the same time. So let's take a quick look inside and see what you get. A well detailed two sided manual as well as a dipole antenna. Now, most people tend not to use this antenna, but for the purpose of this video, I'm going to do some tests later in this video using the standard dipole. Now, the cables that are included are of a standard setup. So, as you can see, we've got five cables in total. The two that you see here, the red and black, are your power. So, you can use two cell all the way up to four cell on this. Then, the other three cables are for your video camera. So, we've got yellow for video red for fiber out to power your video camera, and the brown is your ground for your video camera. So let's take a look at the video transmitter itself. It measures in at 31 millimeters by 20 millimeters and weighs 7.5 grams. So going from the top left hand side, you can see it has a built-in microphone. Underneath that, we have our channel selector and band selector. At the bottom, we have our power and video connector. Going around to the right hand side, we have a bunch of LEDs. So we have our band selection LEDs, and our channel selection LEDs. This helps give you a visual representation of what band ad channel you are on and is saved on the onboard memory for next time you power it up. The antenna is also SMA, so it is compatible with Fatshark accessories. The SMA comes in two different variants on the 200 milliwatt video transmitter. As you can see on this one, it comes out of the side. You can also have it in the more traditional position coming out of the top. So let's power up the VTX and I'll show you how to change the bands and channels. So at the top of the frame you can see that we have blue and red LEDs. Now the five blue LEDs represent the band that you are on from A all the way up to E. And the red LEDs go up to eight to represent the channels that you are on. Now if you want to change bands, it's a simple case of holding the button for two seconds and you'll see that the blue LED then hops across to the next band. Now if you want to change the channel on that band, then just a quick press of the button will have you going through the eight channels on the particular band that you're on at that time. So here's a quick comparison with a immersion at 600 milliwatt 5.8 and is almost half the size of the 600. And width wise, they are about the same. So let's add the camera and try them out. For the purpose of the test, I'm just going to crudely push the servo prongs onto the cable that came with it. It is gonna cause a little bit of interference whilst it's moving around, but it shouldn't be too bad. So here I've connected a 700 TV line Fat Shark and I'm skipping through the bands and you will see that when I get to the right band, the video will let it show up on the screen. The camera is being powered by the five volt out from the video transmitter also. So let's do a test with the 200 milliwatt first. As you can see, I've got my fat shark goggles just sat on the chair here and recording this DVR footage. And you may notice that I was using one of the Immersion RC patch antennas. This is what I always fly with. I tend to get really good uh, video transmission through this. The antenna on the video transmitter itself is still the single dipole that came with it. We're now walking through one of our storerooms and we've still got clear picture even though we've got a wall in between us. Another thing worth mentioning is that this whole building is made out of metal. All the structural supports are metal and the roofs and the side walls are all metal. So this is the worst kind of situation you could fly in when you're surrounded by the metal as the frequencies bounce all around it. And now we're two rooms away in one of the workshops and I've still got a very good signal. A bit of break up here and there, but don't forget my body will be getting in the way of the signal. Also that the cables, as I shown you earlier, are just pushed in to the uh, servo cables so they're moving around freely so that will cause a bit of the static. So that worked very well. So let's swap over now to a 25 milliwatt and see what the difference is. Again using the same 700 TV line fat shot camera but with a 25 milliwatt video transmitter and the standard dipole antenna. So I'm just passing through into the second storeroom now and we still have good video. We do have a wall in the way but it's easily flyable in this condition and through into one of our workshops again. We are now two rooms away and we've still got very good video reception. We would easily be able to fly with this kind of breakup. As I mentioned earlier, this is a really bad environment because of all this metal that you see around 
all of this is reflecting the signals around and causing issues with the video transmission. On the way back this time I thought maybe I'll just uh, go outside and see if we can still get a signal. So the receiver is inside in one of the other rooms and I'm fully outside now out of the metal box that is the uh, showroom and as you can see I've still got a good picture and I'm starting to go behind vehicles and things. So I think this brings up a valid point of why do you need 600 milliwatts of power when a 25 milliwatt can do all of this. Now one of the best things you can do when you're flying FPV is upgrade your video antennas. So as I mentioned earlier the Fast Shark receiver has a small patch antenna on there and the transmitter itself has a dipole on there. I could increase the uh, penetration power with different types of antennas. But just for the purpose of this test I left the standard dipole antennas that came with the set on the video transmitters. So I think you will agree that the video transmitters are working pretty well considering the conditions and I would say most people would still be able to fly through this static. In fact I definitely flew in worse conditions. So in conclusion overall I think these video transmitters are fantastic. The single button to select what band and channel you on definitely helps make this a very good little bit of kit and its small size and low weight will definitely come into play when you're fitting these on very small quads, even the 180s and 250s. The fact that you can also have it with the SMA at a right angle will also help with fitting onto awkward sized machines. But the cherry on the cake for me is having the race band channels, because if you're going to be attending any of the race events this year, or just flying with friends, then these video transmitters are definitely going to help. So that's it for today's video guys, hopefully some of you guys will have found this insightful. There are purchasing links down below and if you want to see more of these then stick around. Thanks for watching, I'll be back soon.